Um, hi, my name is Su Han Lee, and uh, I'm a senior bioinformatics scientist at the Data Coordination Center at Harvard Medical School. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, reproducible data processing at the Data Coordination and Integration Center with ECIC. Um, yeah, so this is our team. Um, so Professor Peter Park is our principal investigator, and Dr. Burak Alver is our scientific project manager. And everyone on this list has contributed to what I'm going to present today. Um, so what do we do at the DCIT? So one of the things that we do um, is to build a data portal, um, which can be accessed through data.40nucleum.org. Um, so it is built on top of uh, Amazon Cloud. And we have built um, a bunch of software programs that are running behind um, this portal. And today, um, I'm going to talk a little more detail about um, Kibana and Foresight, uh, which are relevant to um, data processing. Um, OK, back to the portal. Um, let's navigate a little bit. Um, let's get some in situ high sea data by clicking on this bar. Um, then we can get to a list of in situ high sea data. Let's look at the first one. It will lead you to the uh, page that where you can see all the details about this experiment, including publication, uh, species, and cell line, and restriction enzyme, etc. You can also see uh, processed files here. Um, and um, we are, in particular, visualizing the contact matrix file using high glass, uh, which is incorporated into our portal. Now, if you want to know how these process files are generated, you can simply go to Provenum, and it will show you um, the graph um, that represents data processing, starting from raw fast files. And this can be expanded to uh, full screen mode. Now, uh, we have three sub-workflows for this pipeline. We can see clearly here. Um, they consist of three steps, alignment and filtering and matrix aggregation. And so this is basically our high C pipeline. Now, if you want to know more details about some of these uh, workflows, you can click on um, the box and then you can see the title of the workflow and the steps and the software used in the workflow and some other information. Now, if you click on the name of the workflow, you can see even more details. Like you can see how um, the steps are organized within the workflow. And if you want to look at more details, you can uh, click on the details tab, and you can see like the Docker image and the CWL, um, the step CWL that are associated with it. Um, so what is the CWL then? So CWL is a basically a language that uh, used to describe a pipeline structure. Um, so it is a very um, structured format. Um, so one workflow can be a CWL, but also different steps can be a CWL. And one, the workflow CWL can simply point to the step CWL. And the CWLs can contain the information about inputs, outputs, and base command and what kind of Docker image you want to um, use to run this command. So then, why are we using uh, CWL and Docker for uh, the, our workflow pipeline? So the key is that we want to ensure the pipeline reproducibility and portability. Um, so basically, CWL is, as I mentioned earlier, is a structure of the workflow. Um, and Docker provides an image of all the software programs and dependencies that you need to run a workflow. So uh, CWL and Docker combined together can uh, provide a portable version of a pipeline. So um, let's see, um, someone has created a pipeline and processed their data with it, and they wrote a paper about it. Now, if you wanna process your own data, and you want to also compare your data with the published data, then what you would normally do is to first read the paper 
And then according to the description, you will build your own version of the same pipeline, which is similar to the original pipeline, but probably not exactly the same. So to ensure the comparability, you will also run this pipeline on the original data. And some other researcher will do the same. And another researcher will do the same. So basically everyone will build their own version of the same pipeline, but in a slightly different way. But if you can download the pipeline um, and run it as it is, then everyone uh, can run the same pipeline without having to build their own version. So this increases the reproducibility and efficiency dramatically. And CWM and Docker enables uh, such pipeline sharing. Um, so then um, how do we run these CW and Docker pipelines at the data portal? Um, we use our own software programs. Um, one is Tibana. Um, Tibana executes uh, the pipeline and it also allocates cloud resources and it creates um, processed files and their metadata on the Cornean data portal. Um, in addition, we're using Foresight um, to collect run parameters um, and for scheduling and curation of the workflow runs. So um, let me tell you a little more details about this. So Tibana is basically a um, cloud-based workflow manager. Um, so it creates and allocates cloud resources first, uh, which is a virtual machine. And then it fetches data in the pipeline to the cloud run environment to the virtual machine. And then it executes the pipeline uh, by creating the containers from the Docker image and following the steps described in the CWL. And then um, during this process, it will monitor the run, it will create the logs um, regularly. And lastly, it will create the 48 metadata objects for processed files and workflow runs um, and uh, record the status of the run. Um, so Tibana uses a built-in AWS graphical user interface um, to check individual uh, run status. And for instance, if you look at one of these um, uh, workflow runs, then you can look at these four um, different tasks to to complete this run. So the first one, for instance, uh, communicates with the 14 data portal. And the second one actually uh, creates the virtual machine and runs uh, the CWL pipeline. Um, and the second, uh, while the second step is running, the third step will constantly check whether uh, the second step is complete. And then lastly, it will uh, update the status. And if there is any error, it will report the error. And on top of this, um, we're using Foresight, which is a um, cloud-based system for monitoring and maintenance for the 4D and data portal. Um, so it has um, a series of user-defined tests that can be scheduled or run manually um, on a graphical user interface. So um, this is an example of how we run uh, pipelines in a more organized way. Um, so this is a screenshot for the pipeline checks. Um, so for different 14 experiment types, such as in-situ HiC, um, dilution HiC, and TCC, DNA HiC, uh, we have different, uh, either different pipelines or different parameters for the same pipeline. And so those in, that information is uh, recorded and we can use this to check whether um, all the pipeline runs are complete for a given experiment type or if something is missing and requires our attention. So that's how we run uh, these pipelines on our data portal. But if you want to run the 14 pipelines on uh, outside the data portal, um, you can find uh, more information uh, about these individual pipelines at on the help page of the 14 data portal as well as the workflow um, page that I showed you before. Um, so you can click on the help and go to the analysis and visualization tab, and you can click on one of those uh, pipelines listed. Um, so for instance, this is um, Replicic data processing pipeline. Um, we also have ataxic processing pipeline, um, which we adapted from ENCODE. 
We also have a chipstick processing pipeline, uh, which we also adapted from ENCODE. So uh, in order to run the ATAXIC and chipstick processing pipelines, which are um, described in a different workflow language called WIDL um, instead of CWL, we also uh, modified our software to be able to deal with um, both CWL and WIDL based pipelines. Um, so then um, exactly how do we use these pipelines outside the portal? Um, so in order to run high c pipeline locally, um, you can use CWL tool, um, which is a tool to run CWL uh, scripts in any, any local environment. Um, and to run it, you have to specify an input JSON file, um, which includes the information about the specific file path and the parameter values. Um, and if you want to run the high c pipelines on the AWS cloud outside the data, uh, 14 data portal, you can use Tibana. Um, so we have two different versions of Tibana. One is the version that we use for the portal and the other uh, more lighter version that we provide for uh, any external users. So you can use Tibana to run any 4DM pipelines or any other CWL Docker-based pipelines outside 4DM portal. Um, by specifying the Tibana specific input JSON, which points to a specific CWL file. And uh, more details can be found uh, inside the Tibana documentation. Uh, the link is provided at the bottom of this slide. Okay, um, so that's uh, about it. Um, I will take more questions. <laughs> 